so I'm grateful that I have such a beautiful family. Uh, both my parents, they have supported me, they always stand with me. And for them, I'm just their daughter. It's just like as, as for other parents, they have a daughter, they love her, they take care of her. But then I have two uh, younger brothers and as usual, brothers, they're cheeky, we still fight, we still argue. And my brothers, they just, they don't care what awards I'm winning outside and who I am and if I'm a, a ambassador of something or UN messenger of peace. So when I won the Nobel Peace Prize and I came back to the hotel where we were staying and my little brother started saying that, look, you have won the Nobel Peace Prize, but it does not mean you become a bossy sister. So I always wanted to uh, get quality education, to go to a good university and it was my dream and now that dream has come true that I'm going to Oxford. I really worked hard for it and, and I was so happy when I received the offer uh, and, and I'm excited to meet new people, to make friends, to learn. It is a great place of learning. the goal of this mission is to empower local leaders and local activists. So uh, we want to uh, increase that investment and, and also support local advocates as well, local girl advocates. So for that we have announced $3 million and we want to expand that group, uh, redouble our efforts and, uh, and make sure we can reach to as many local activists as we can because they are the real change makers in their community and when we empower them, through them we can bring change. It also includes e-learning and, uh, and, and other uh, improvements in the quality of education. So it is a, is a vast uh, uh, project, it covers many areas, but our main goal is to empower local leaders. So this year I went on a Gulf Power Trip and I went to uh, America, Canada, then and Nigeria, Iraq and Mexico and in these places I met amazing and incredible girls and I heard their inspiring stories. In Iraq I met a girl called Najla and she was 14 years old when she was wearing her wedding dress and she took off her high heels and she escaped from her wedding, she ran away and later on uh, her, um, her village was uh, captured by the extremist ISIS and she was actually attacked but she did not stop and she's still continuing her education, she's speaking out, she has survived and she uh, she resisted all that she went through and, and the things that we cannot imagine for a second she has gone through all that but she is still fighting for education and she wants to be a journalist. So these are the stories that inspire me but my aim is to bring these stories then to a global platform like the UN and allow these girls to meet their uh, country leaders, their local leaders so that their voices can be raised. I'm just reminding them of their responsibilities, that they are holding the positions which, in which they are responsible for their people and for the future generation. And I remind them that they have to increase investment towards, uh, towards schooling, towards quality education. Otherwise, we will lose this, this future generation. This, this will impact not just the children, not just the girls, but all of us. So we have to invest those 130 million girls who are out of school. We have to support them. We have to stand with them, uh, make changes in the law, and also uh, take action. So I think men, they have to do a lot. And uh, my father uh, is an inspiration because uh, his five sisters could not go to school. So he decided that he would allow his own daughter to go to school to get her education and then to raise her voice. When we started campaigning in Swat Valley, when terrorism started and girls' education was banned, there were many other girls who wanted to speak out, but their parents, their brothers did not allow them. My father was the one who did not stop me. We have to believe in girls. We have to believe in our sisters, in our daughters, and allow them to be who they want to be. As my father says that, you do not have to do something. Just do not clip their wings. And if you do not take their wings, just let them fly and let them achieve their dreams. So men have to come forward, they have to support women. And, and it's, it's better for the, for the whole economy, it's better for each and every one of us. Uh, it, it will help the economy to grow even faster, it will improve the standards of living of each and every one of us, it will improve health. And it also benefits the children because when women are educated, they are more likely to care 
take care of their children and their education and their future. So I have seen a lot in my life from terrorism, extremism, uh, to then being attacked and I was at a point where I had to make a decision whether I want to continue my campaign for girls education or not. And, uh, and I think I have been away from my home in Pakistan for a long time. And so going all through all this situation in my life, I have learned that uh, now surviving that attack, this life is for a purpose and that is for the education of children. So it's only 70, 80 years that we live for and why not live it for a good purpose? Why not live it uh, for a service that can help humanity, that can help the world? So I want to help as many girls as I can to make sure that they get quality education and achieve their dreams.